What's good, y'all? Why Nate Diaz should move back down to lightweight? So let me start by saying this. I made an 8DS video a little under three weeks ago. It is my most popular video to date, and I never had a video draw up so much controversy and opinion clashing in my life. So I started this channel a little over a month ago, and I'm only at 100 subscribers. My Nate Diaz video being my most popular video is almost at about 6,000 subscribers. Now, hear me out. I know that's not a staggering number. I know some of you guys laugh at that number like, well, who does he think he is? I only have 100 subscribers, and I started this video, like I said. I started this uh, YouTube channel, like I said, a little over a month ago, and, you know, those are unprecedented numbers for me. I've never seen those type of numbers before, so, you know, you can't blame me for being a little bit excited. But, anyway... So like I said, I've been called a casual, I've been called an idiot, I've been told I don't know what I'm talking about for making that video and being harsh on Nate Diaz. Maybe I was a little harsh, and maybe I exaggerated it a little bit. And people have been throwing their opinions at me left and right saying, oh man, you don't know, like this fight will be more competitive than you think. So I had to relook at it, and I had to give it a reassessment of their skills and what they bring to the octagon. And I'm gonna say this. After seeing Jorge Masvidal get flatlined like that in Miami and then looking at these guys, looking at the points they're at in their career and all of this and how hungry Leon Edwards is and how, honestly, not so hungry Nate Diaz is, uh, this may be the first time we see Nate Diaz get finished in a long time, you guys. I'm starting to lean more to that side. Meaning, you guys sending hate comments isn't making my opinion like you know change not a single bit and i know that's gonna piss a lot of you day ds fanboys off and you're probably going to be in my comments like freaking setting it on fire and i get it you guys are nate ds fans and i'm one of you guys i'm an nate ds fan myself believe it or not i love me some nate ds so that's why i'm making this video why nate ds should move back down to lightweight so let's go ahead and let's talk about nate ds for a second so let's have an honest breakdown of Nate Diaz's skills real quick, okay? So the guy's skill set consists of some high-level boxing, which is his main way of offense, you know? He also utilizes the clinch very well, which is also a method of tiring out his opponents. And speaking of tiring out his opponents, one of his best weapons is that the fact that his cardiovascular abilities, which is only challenged by the likes of Tony Ferguson, Colby Covington, and like Cain Velasquez in his prime, you guys, the guy can go all day long. And then on top of that, which may be his best weapon, in my opinion, is his high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu. The guy also has an iron chin and an iron will, and he is a pressure, come forward, in-your-face style fighter and likes to make it ugly in there. So the problem with that in the top five is that at welterweight, the reason why I don't see a lot of success for Nate Diaz at welterweight and why welterweight is not the answer for him is that his style and his skill set is not going to affect the high level welterweights the same way the high level white lightweights will be affected by it. Why? Because Nate Diaz has a styles disadvantage one and a size disadvantage he can't just rely on walking the bigger man down and trying to gas them out. You look at him versus Kamaru Usman. He tries that against Kamaru Usman. He gets ragdolled for five rounds. That's not competitive. And you can't convince me otherwise that it is. If you think that that fight is competitive for Nate Diaz, you are an absolute idiot. Colby Covington. Almost the same thing. Colby Covington isn't as strong as Usman. Neither is as big. But you best believe Colby Covington is going to put Nate Diaz on his butt and just basically control him for five rounds and then pick up the pace on Nate Diaz backing him up and picking him apart with Kobe Covington's boxing you know then you got Gilbert Burns and then Leon Edwards which who we're about to see like I said those two guys do the same thing and Masvidal already did break apart Nate Diaz so his weapons at welterweight don't they do not have the same effect that they do on the lightweights so I know I'm saying that with confidence thinking that Nate Diaz could just go down to lightweight and be a champion let's talk about it shall we so the big names at lightweight so we got to start with the guys that are contesting for the 155 pound championship on the same card that Nate Diaz fights Leon Edwards on Michael Chandler Charles Oliveira and then you got Justin Gaethje you got Conor McGregor and then you got Tony Ferguson right so you look at all those guys 
What all do they have in common? They're all the same or similar weight to Nate Diaz, but not the same weight. Nate Diaz has a size advantage over every single one of those guys. You're starting to hear me out now? Okay, keep listening. Nate Diaz's primary weapons is his pressure boxing and his clinch on the feet. The guy is really good in the clinch and creative in the clinch, and he has some talented boxing, which could back up the smaller guy anytime. Just Nate Diaz has a height advantage over almost all of those guys. I mean, seriously. So you look at Michael Chandler, right? You look at Michael Chandler, Charles Oliveira, right? So I look at Nate Diaz's chances in those fights. So Nate Diaz, the way he stacks up against the both title challengers isn't as lopsided as you think. Michael Chandler likes to push a pace and he likes to push it heavy in the first few rounds. Nate Diaz chin and everybody's like oh his chin is deteriorating i know i just said he might get finished by leon edwards but the guy since he's been at welterweight is used to getting hit by bigger men you following along jorge masvidal punished him for five for four rounds until the doctor came and stopped it jorge masvidal wasn't able to get him out of there able to rock him multiple times jorge masvidal wasn't able to finish him though so are you telling me a 170 pound Masvidal has similar power to a 155 pound Michael Chandler? Well, you're not wrong if you think that. It's actually probably as closer than you think. But the case is, is that Nate Diaz is used to getting hit and punished by the bigger men at welterweight now. Not saying Michael Chandler's power won't have any effect on him. I just think that he won't have the same reaction out of Nate Diaz because he's used to the power already and he knows he's going to get hit. That's majority of his style. Michael Chandler pushes a heavy pace with the wrestling, the grappling and everything. Diaz has high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and can possibly survive anything Michael Chandler tries to put him through on the ground. He could get back up and as Chandler starts to slow down. The bigger man in Nate Diaz can put all that weight on him, put that clinch that in that high level boxing and start mixing his strikes up together. That is that is a possible win for Nate Diaz. I mean, nothing is impossible. Then you look at Charles Oliveira. You look that's a little bit more of a harder fight for Diaz only because the jiu jitsu will cancel each other out. Charles Oliveira, if I could look at somebody in that fight and say somebody's going to get submitted, I would say both of those guys could submit each other. Honestly, Charles Oliveira still makes little mistakes on the ground that gets him caught, you know, but Nate Diaz has yet to do that. The thing is about Nate Diaz is that he'll go for something and instead of getting almost submitted, he'll just get beaten to a pulp if he misses his positioning. You know, that's the only thing. Charles Oliveira isn't really necessarily looking for ground and pound on the bottom. He's looking for sneaky submissions and trying to get you out of there. Nate Diaz is great at submission defense. So, so the jiu-jitsu will cancel each other out. The cardiovascular abilities, I have to give that to Nate Diaz. I have to get that edge to Nate Diaz. So to be contested on the feet because the scrambles, Nate Diaz would just get back to the feet every single time. But the wrestling of Charles Oliveira might make a difference. There's a reason why the Diaz brothers doesn't like wrestlers because they don't do too well against them. That is the truth. And so Charles Oliveira's wrestling could be the X factor in that. But if he doesn't go the wrestling route, which is possible that he doesn't, Diaz could 100% contest with him on the feet because Charles Oliveira isn't just a devastating striker and is going to keep Nate Diaz away from him. I think the boxing is actually really competitive, but I think that's a little hard for Nate Diaz because he doesn't have as many options as he does against Michael Chandler. Call me crazy, but I just find Charles Oliveira a little bit of the harder challenge, but it's competitive. It's competitive between both of the ch uh, title challengers. Other than at welterweight, the title challengers are Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington, and it's not competitive for Nate Diaz. Do you see what I'm getting at? So then we move down. So we then got Justin Gaethje, Conor McGregor, and Dustin Poirier. So let me start with Dustin Poirier because that is likely the fight to happen if Nate Diaz goes down. If Dustin Poirier loses to Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz gets beat by Leon Edwards, how I got predicted, they're going to make that fight as the entry fight for Nate Diaz. But if Conor loses to Dustin Poirier... I feel like they're not going to make the trilogy for Connor and uh, Nate right away. I feel like they're going to go the Tony Ferguson route. So let's look at Nate versus Ferguson. 
So that is extremely competitive, especially at this point in career of Tony Ferguson. The boxing is absolutely competitive. I feel like that'll be back and forth. But the X factor, or there is no X factor. It's basically whoever shows up better on the night because they're so similar. I used to say Tony Ferguson was a better version of Nate Diaz, but it's hard to say that nowadays. I think that fight is more 50-50 than you guys think. I feel like Tony Ferguson could win just due to the fact that he might slice up that face in Nate Diaz. But Ferguson fought oddly against Charles Oliveira, man. I don't know. If he backs up, Nate Diaz is going to tune, tune him up. Absolutely. He's going to control him in the clinch. That's where Diaz and Ferguson differ because a lot of people like to compare those two. But Diaz relies a lot on the clinch, on the offensive clinch. And Tony Ferguson doesn't really go to that. But Diaz does a lot, you know. So that fight is competitive. Absolutely competitive. But let's keep moving. So him versus Justin Gaethje, a lot of guys were writing Diaz off for this fight, and I don't see why. I think it's way more competitive on paper than you think. I believe Nate Diaz absolutely has a solid chance of letting Justin Gaethje punch himself out and getting tired and him submitting Justin Gaethje on the ground. Sure, Gaethje has the early stand-up. Gaethje is probably going to turn Diaz into a punching bag with legs with all those kicks and all those overhand haymakers that he likes to throw that is going to constantly probably catch Nate Diaz, right? But I don't see him knocking him out. I just see Justin Gaethje absolutely getting tired, punching himself out, trying to move away from the pressure in Nate Diaz. And like I said, you guys probably are dis you guys probably think he would beat Nate Diaz because of the leg kicks and the performance he had against Ferguson. But like I said, for Nate Diaz has a more aggressive, not aggressive, but a different style of pressure that Tony Ferguson does, you guys. Nate Diaz has that clinch, and he is really good at it. And if he starts pulling on the head and hitting him with those short, choppy shots, he can definitely wear down Justin Gaethje by the second round after Justin Gaethje has punched himself out and is now backed up, and Nate Diaz is starting to implement his style on him. Absolutely. So then if it goes to the ground, somehow it gets to the ground, the fight is over. Justin Gaethje exposed himself against Habib. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that Nate Diaz would absolutely take advantage of that opportunity on the ground like Khabib did. So call me crazy, but I think Nate Diaz could beat Justin Gaethje. Seriously. So then Conor McGregor, we saw how that fight goes. It's a close fight every single time. Obviously, Diaz can win just as much as Connor can win. Moving on. So then we got Dustin Poirier. And this is the fight that is likely to happen if Diaz moves back down and Dustin loses to Connor. So this fight is extremely interesting, only because it really relies on two things. Diaz doesn't reset. That's another reason why I could why I would favor him against Gaethje is that Dustin doesn't reset. And what, I mean, sorry, Nate doesn't reset. Nate does not reset. He gets hit and he keeps coming at you and he uses that clinch, the boxing, the jiu-jitsu once again will cancel each other out. If there's anybody that would submit each other in that fight, it would be Nate Diaz submitting Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier, when he's gassed out, makes a lot of mistakes, man. But Nate, but I don't see Nate Diaz TKOing or finishing Dustin only because Dustin's so tough now these days. But I can absolutely see Dustin Poirier once again punching himself out. Nate Diaz coming forward. Dustin Poirier trying to knock his head off his shoulders with all those big switch step right hands and switch step overhands and taking him down, using the calf kicks and all that stuff. Diaz is tough, man. You cannot just rely on a TKO with Diaz because he is so tough. He's like granite. He has a granite chin. So then you look at it. And so for the first thing I would say is that Dustin Poirier is going to go the wrestling route and he's going to try and kick and he's going to try and outbox Nate Diaz. The thing is, is that Nate Diaz is going to be suffocating Dustin Poirier at every moment in the fight. Dustin Poirier backs up without you even having to back him up. If you back up against Nate Diaz, you're letting him take control of the fight and set the pace for it, which is terrible. For his defense coming forward, Nate just covers up and eats the shots. That is ill-advised with Dustin Poirier because he will punch until you get away from him, you know? So 
with all of that being said, with Nate not resetting and Nate controlling the clinch, I believe Nate Diaz will control the clinch against Dustin Boyer and him having a size advantage and lightweight Nate Diaz being prime Nate Diaz. I absolutely can see where Nate Diaz wins this fight against Dustin Poirier. So without making this video 20 minutes long, I wanted to go ahead and make my assessment on that topic and why that is my most controversial video to date. But this has been why Nate Diaz should move back down to lightweight. As I just explained, the fights for him there are way more competitive than they are at welterweight. I hope you guys understand. Call me crazy, call me a casual, be sure to call me whatever you want in the comment section below. Let's get a debate going, you guys. This has been your boy Trippy, and I'm out, man.